Hello and welcome. My name is Rowan Garlow. I am a trauma recovery practitioner and voice dialogue or parts work is one of the modalities that I utilize both with myself and my clients. In addition to somatic experiencing, timeline work, inner child work, and a lot of other things that have really helped me in the process of rehabilitation. Um, I won't say more about that, even though there's a lot that I want to say, just because I want to keep this video very exclusive to speaking about voice dialogue. And it, this is just going to be an introduction, a little bite-sized piece, because if I were to go into all of what voice dialogue really is and how it functions, we would literally be here all day. So to really begin to break it down, voice dialogue is a process that was created by Hal and Sidra Stone. And what's beautiful about this process is it wasn't really originally brought in as a trauma recovery process per se. It was brought in as a curious consciousness expanding process that was designed to improve relationships. So Hal and Sidra, this process was birthed by them through their own desire to have more meaningful and full and complete relationships, not only with themselves, but with each other and the people around them. So what I love about voice dialogue is it's not a, there's something wrong with you, let's fix it process. It is a consciousness expanding process. It's an aware ego process. So let's break that down a little bit. What is an aware ego? An aware ego is something that needs to be developed. Most of us, until we find our way either through some kind of awakening experiences where the things that were once in our subconscious, the things that we're not aware of about ourselves start to come into conscious view, we are operating from our operating ego, which is essentially all of our primary selves clustered in together, and these primary selves are running the show. So what is a primary self? A primary self is going to be born out of a vulnerability. So the primary selves are aspects of our personality, aspects of our being, energetic imprints, energetic patterns, and energies that are developed as a necessity out of different kinds of vulnerabilities as a result of being socialized and raised in the environments and family units and social structures that we are developed in. So primary selves are gonna be running the show until we bring in something like an aware ego process. Now. From, these, from this operating ego, what's, what's just going to be running automatically, there's not a whole lot of choice that's available to us. We feel sort of hijacked by our own selves. We feel hijacked in moments by particular parts of us, and there isn't a whole lot of choice available. Uh, we may also feel like we're at war with ourselves. And the thing about these different parts that we go into dialogue with is their opposites. So they're born in pairs of opposites. So for every this part, there is always going to be an opposite. And typically the primary self, when we're looking what's over here, it's gonna be a disowned self. That's what's usually been swept under the rug, living in the basement, and we're gonna typically have a little bit less awareness about this disowned self. Now, there is a direct relationship between the primary selves, our operating ego, and this aware ego, meaning that the more uh, development that we have of this aware ego, the more access that we have to choice, the more expanded our consciousness becomes, the less we have to rely on these primary selves to run our life. And we don't really want to be running our life from these primary selves because it's an automatic pattern. There's no consciousness behind that a lot of times. And not only that, but remember how I said, these primary selves are born out of a vulnerability. So they're there running and operating automatically because the vulnerability is not being taken care of directly. So voice dialogue is 
a consciousness reorganization, rehabilitation, and curious, expansive process. It's so amazing. Now, what's different about something like voice dialogue compared to, let's say, internal family systems, you might have heard something like internal family systems, is that IFS is has a set number of selves. So there are this many selves, this is what you're looking for within a person. Voice dialogue is not like that. Yes, there are typical primary selves that you're gonna see coming out, such as, let's say, the pusher, the inner critic, the caregiver, manager, controller, the judge, the rebel, the perfectionist, being, doing, optimist, pessimist, and some of these primary selves are what we call game changers, meaning that when we alter these, let's say, um, pessimists and optimists, that's an example of a game changer, it is like the soup that the rest of our, or like the, excuse me, like the broth that the rest of ourselves are sort of sitting in. If the rest of ourselves are like the vegetables, these game changers are the broth. It's, it's the environment, the sort of texture that the rest of ourselves are living in. So when we alter these, these major game changers like optimist, pessimist, spiritual versus nihilistic, uh, being versus doing, when we change the energy dynamics there, we actually change the environment that the rest of ourselves are living in, right? Because what this process is saying is that we are really multidimensional. And the way that we open up that multidimensionality is through being in direct relationship with the multitudes of ourselves and sort of being an internal alchemist where we can shift the relationships, shift not only our relationship to these parts and what is vulnerable underneath them, but from the place and the development of the aware ego, we're able to appropriately rebalance and utilize energies in their highest form. So voice dialogue is not a process of getting rid of certain parts and judging or kicking out. This is a process of, ex of exploration. Let's look and see what is here? What isn't working? How can we rebalance these energies? What would be the exalted form of this energy? Meaning, if I were to take some of the burden off of this part that's had to really sort of bolster itself up, prop itself up, be very primary, be in the front of the system, if I were to sort of take care of what was vulnerable underneath that directly, how could I use that energy in a way that was more balanced and just leads to greater harmony within our life? And like I said, there's also these disowned selves and these disowned selves, these ones that, well, we disowned them because they weren't accepted by society. They weren't, wasn't safe to have these parts. That's why we had to adopt this other, these other sort of masks that get put on for the public or for families or friends or whoever. When we, when we start to actually explore these disowned selves, we notice that our attraction to people outside of us, as well as our repulsion or judgment has a lot to do with these disowned selves. And so what's amazing about something like understanding voice dialogue is that it changes the way that you interact not only with yourself, but the way that you perceive what energetically is happening around you. You start to see that there are these opposites that are being reflected in the external, this push and pull of different energies. And why are we doing that? Why are we pulling in an energy from the external? Why are we pushing away an energy from the external? Because it's our unconscious way of trying to manage what's happening internally. And the most important thing is to manage it from within. So we're not pushing and pulling from the external. So this is, this is a process of, and this is in my own words, this is not coming from the voice dialogue perspective necessarily, 
but this is the process of rehabilitation and of becoming conscious of ourselves. So we've got these primary selves, we've got these disowned selves. What does it really look like to do something like voice dialogue? We are, first of all, looking for where do we feel pulled in different directions in our lives? Where do we feel stuck? What's bothering us in what's going on outside of us, which is always going to be a reflection of some kind of dynamic that's taken place internally, that's a good place to start. You come in and you see somebody who, do, who does voice dialogue, they're going to be listening for these pairs of opposites. They're going to be kind of earmarking and starting to create a landscape or a map of what might be going on, where do we want to start? And we're always going to start with the primary selves because if we try to go to what's vulnerable underneath that or we try to go to a disowned self, the primary selves act as basically gatekeepers. We're not going to get in. And I've seen it happen many times where we think that we found something that was primary or we think we're ready to go to a disowned self or something that might be vulnerable and we're going to get an intermediary. So voice dialogue is really cool because you're actually physically moving your body. And this is what allows the process of separation from these primary and disowned selves to occur. Now, if it's disowned, you might think, well, aren't I separated enough? Wouldn't I want to come closer with that thing? Yes, but in order to do that and change the relationship and the energy dynamic, we have, we have to actually be able to step back to do that at first. And that's part of this movement process. So it also helps us to um, get into that specific energy. So we're gonna start off in the center, wherever we show up in the call or lie in live in the flesh with someone. And then you'll do something like this. You'll say, okay, we, we, we sort of earmarked a primary self that we see taking place. Let's say this is a pleaser. This is someone who has a chronic pattern of pleasing other people. And I can promise you that underneath that is a vulnerability, right? What's gonna happen if we don't continue to please people? And what would happen if we had boundaries or tried to take care of ourselves? So you move over, literally in voice dialogue, we move ourselves over, say, okay, we're gonna leave the energy. We're gonna leave Rowan over there, Rowan Garlo over there. And I am just going to choose to take on the energy of my own pleaser. We're not channeling any outside thing. We're not channeling anything, okay? We're just taking on that one energy and we're gonna speak directly from that part. Now you can do this yourself. You can do this with writing, with taking voice notes. Uh, you could walk along the sidewalk and the center could be the aware ego and then this side and this side could be a part on each, you know, a pair of opposites. There's many ways to get creative with this, but if you were doing this with a facilitator, you would literally move over and I, let's say I'm on the other side there, I'm the facilitator, I would have a conversation, a very curious conversation with this part of you. And there's a lot that goes into facilitating and different questions that we might ask and what we're kind of doing in that process, but I'm not gonna go into all of that right now. So you speak from this part, okay, we get a pretty good sense of what's going on here, what might be underneath that, and then we move back to center. And this process of moving back to center is what allows you as the person who's doing this consciousness process to disidentify with that part for a moment. The aware ego is a practice and it's something that is cultivated. The aware ego is neutral. It doesn't have an agenda. It doesn't have an idea about how things should or should not be. And this is the place that we have access to choice from. We want to be living our lives from a space of free will, sovereignty, meaning not being hijacked and pushed and pulled all over the place, and choice, which we can only do from an aware ego because our selves have have been programmed in a way to, to be a certain way. They, they only know how to do that one thing and that is the way that they do it. That's it. 
So aware ego says, okay, interesting. What's going on with this pleaser? What's underneath that? Now I, from here, from aware ego that I'm cultivating, can connect with what is vulnerable underneath this primary self. Let's say the primary, let's say underneath this primary pleaser self is fear of rejection. Now we can start to change the energy dynamics because now I can have a direct relationship with this fear of rejection, which means I'm lifting the burden off of this primary self, it doesn't have to work so hard. And I get to see what is the benefit of something like a pleaser. I might be thinking, well, this is these are extreme ends of the spectrum. I don't know what's good about a pleaser. Well, if we had none of this energy, none of it, and we were all the way over here in the opposite, which for this person in this hypothetical situation, this one over here might be a disowned self. This might be someone who is like great with having boundaries. This is a part of the energy that's, that was always there, but has been swept into the basement that says, I don't care what other people think of me. I care about, I care about taking care of myself. I care about, right, this, this is what wasn't allowed. This is what wasn't safe. And there's going to be a vulnerability underneath that, especially for the fact that it's been swept away and disowned. So what could be positive about this? If we are all this, and it's, and it's just this extreme end of the spectrum, we are swinging ourselves like a pendulum between basically codependency and narcissism in the case of the pleaser and what's on the other side of it. When we have a little bit of this, we can feel other people. We are connected to other people. We know how what we're gonna do is gonna impact them. When we're connected to this, in, an, in a balanced way, in a way that is exalting this, we have boundaries. We're solid in ourselves. We're able to take action in our lives based on what's actually best for us, regardless of what the external is doing or saying. Now, what would happen if I suddenly had access to both of these energies, a dose, a homeopathic dose of each of these energies? And there's lots of different ways that we can work with this, bringing in the different energies, giving them their own space because we're not here to blend these energies. We're not here to, to you know, mix them up and sort of make a third. We're here to make a third option, but the third option is the expanded aware ego, which has the awareness of both, understands where they're coming from, takes care of the vulnerability underneath them, and says, you know what, you're really good at this, this is what I'm gonna use you for. These are the moments I'm gonna use you in. You're really good at this, same thing. Now we become the conductor of our own internal orchestra. And thank you to Helen Sidra Stone for that analogy of becoming the conductor of our own orchestra instead of what is happening when we're operating out of this operating ego, like I was talking about in the beginning, we've got somebody coming on stage, they're playing the violin, this is what I'm gonna do, and then, oh, all of a sudden, the cymbals, the drums are coming on, and then, and it's not harmonious. It doesn't, the music that's coming from the being is not harmonious. When we are in a state of of expanded consciousness and awareness, which is an ongoing process. It's an ongoing practice to cultivate this. There is a symphony in every moment of our lives. We are able to choose. We are able to be sovereign and free and take care of ourselves appropriately and move through the world with a sense of flow instead of pushing and pulling with our own selves, which is going to reflect as pushing and pulling with these external energies 
in our relationships and the world around us. So I hope this is a nice little bite-sized piece for you to understand what is voice dialogue. And if you are curious about this, reach out to me, reach out to, to anyone who's a voice dialogue facilitator and try it out because this process has, it's changed my life. So has somatic experiencing. So has understanding the mechanics of energy, the mechanics of our existence, of the very architecture that makes up organic creation and understanding what is causing a collapse within our fields, within our architecture, Understanding these things, which you know I'm getting a little bit here outside of voice dialogue, has been absolutely life-changing. And it's allowed me to authentically and organically get and be on that path of healing so I can be all of the things that I was named, that I just named. So I'm heading towards that path of resurrecting sovereignty, freedom, walking with my truest and highest and organic timeline in every moment. Because when we have access to choice, we have access to our organic timelines. Because every choice that we make puts us in a timeline in every single moment. And if those choices are being hijacked by unconscious or automatic patterns, we're going to be in some kind of a collapsed, unsustainable, disharmonious, right? Because look at the world around us. We are the beings who are saying, you know, enough is enough. Let's do something different. So thank you for being curious about this, being out there. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And I will see you again.